I think the Maclay Valley has always been very resilient, but since the fire, it's been forged even stronger. This one was probably most intense. It was a firestorm. You didn't have much time to think. You just had to act. When the chips are down, our community pulls together. It feels amazing to be able to assist. When someone just comes and helps you, you don't ask for it, it makes you feel good. You think, wow, I really do live in a great community. The area itself was extremely dry, and I guess we were a tinderbox. The day of November the 8th, that was, that was the day it actually really hit us. It was just a storm. It, it really was. It was like a fireball. I'm Louise Richardson. I live here with my husband, Keith, my son, Cullen. I had gone into town to actually pick my grandkids up but I was separated from my husband and son because we lost phone contact. And then you started hearing on the news about people dying and... For me, that was the worst part, not knowing whether they were OK. So then we finally got through and I looked up and it was... Gollum. <laughs> when you think you've lost someone, the fact that they're OK, nothing else really matters. It's just that simple, yeah. We actually made it home to look at the house. That was a shock because there's nothing. 30 years down the drain. I guess there's so much that's gone that you just, you don't even remember everything that's gone. How you going? Not too bad. There was a Facebook page called Fires in the Maclay set up and just after the fires, they started advertising for people to help out those that lost everything. What else you got in here? and I said I had the know-how to build a farm shed. So I noticed up here where, you, where you've built, you've wired in the electricity on top of what we built here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We didn't know Michael. He just breezed into our life. <laughs> this wonderful shed was put up. It's come along really well, but this has yeah. been amazing. You know, his kids were wonderful. They came and helped. How many screws you did that in? two days. About... Fifteen. Fifteen. <laughs> In the end, I built five shelters amongst a lot of assistance from the community. So many people have come out to help. There's no thanks expected. There's no payment. So when someone like Michael comes in and just says, hey, we're doing this, it takes a burden from you, I guess, because you don't have to ask. I'm very proud now that I've had a chance to reflect. It feels really good to be able to help. It's really nice to see and come back so far after and have a look at, at your yeah, place again. Yeah. How are you? Just seeing what we've done. Are you guys re like going to rebuild or have got lots of temporary combination around? That was one night. It wasn't a fire, but they were worried about trees falling. Karen took one look and said, no, it's OK, I'll go over and organise a, a room at the pub. The, the country pub where I grew up, if you needed to find anybody or get help or source anything, you went to the went pub. Went to the pub. Very hard to ask for help. You get people like Michael and Karen, they take that out of your hands. Makes you feel like you're valued. It's always in the back of my mind, you know, do you guys need anything else? They're always saying, now what can we do next? <laughs> <laughs> From the fires, we fed people, we bedded people down because it's just what you do as any you know, part of a community. You follow your heart, basically. You've been staying upstairs since the fires, have you? Yeah. yeah. When I realised the house burnt down, it, we all came together. They know the pub is like a magnet. Everyone goes there. We've got two permanent residents that lost their houses in the fire. Karen's not in a hurry for us to go. So. You're 18 steps to heaven. Yes. You know I'm going to number those steps. I'm going to put a number on each one of them. <laughs> well, I think since our disaster, it's woken a lot of people up. Yeah, last year it was just fighting fires constantly. My name is Barry O'Meara, Senior Deputy of Willowarren Fire Brigade. Hey. Good to see you. Hey. Good hey. to see you getting hey. some training. Since the fires got an increase in, in, in new members, we welcome them with open arms. It's quite exciting. My name's Shari Knox. I'm a new member of the, the Willowarren Fire Service and it's been really good. Go for it. So training gives me the belief that I know what I'm doing and in the worst case scenario, I will be as prepared as I can be. They're all local, so they all know. If I can protect my property, I can help protect someone else's. Going 
goes into the hose, comes into there. Depending on the pressure you want, pull it back. Since the fires, we're willing to look at how things have been done in the past and how they can be done better. We've just really come together a community and we've chosen to become a family. <laughs> I'm looking forward to the tree planting today as a chance to view the regeneration of the landscape. Uh, also emotionally, it, it does tie in an ability to put the fires to bed. It signifies that regrowth, we're going forward. We're still one community and we're going to help each other heal. Planting something today, you're going, it's going to grow and be there in years to come. It's just a symbol of that hope for the future. And it is building relationships. Every time we, we get together, we get stronger.